Hi everyone, welcome to the next part of the tutorial reversing with HyperDBG. In this part, we're gonna talk about some advanced debugging techniques like hooking IDT and different instructional level hooking. So here's a brief uh, outline of this part. We're gonna see, uh, we're gonna talk about interrupt descriptor table and all of the things that are related to false exception interrupts. And we will see how we can monitor exception or external interrupts in HyperDBG. Uh, the next section is about uh, MSR registers. Uh, we will see how we can read and write into the MSR registers, how we can monitor reads or write into these registers. And uh, we have a part about uh, CPU ID instruction and how we can hook this instruction along with other instructions like RDTSC, RDTSCP, and RDPMC. Also, we'll see how we can uh, hook hyper calls or VM calls, and uh, it is also possible to view uh, the possible changes in uh, debug hardware debug registers. And in the hands-on section, we will see how we can inject codes into running threads and into running processes. The first uh, section is about false exceptions and interrupts. As you probably know, uh, there's a table in uh, x86 processors called IDT table or interrupt descriptor table. This uh, this is an uh, this is an architectural implementation of interrupt ve vector table in Intel processors, and uh, if uh, there is there is a exception, there is a fault, or there is an interrupt in the processor, then the processor will uh, try to find the correct routine that is responsible for handling. And this interrupt, so it tries to uh, look at IDT to, to find the correct response uh, for the exception and interrupts. So IDT is generally uh, triggered by three types of events, hardware interrupts, software interrupts, and processor exceptions. Them are referred as interrupts. So basically, if uh, in case of HyperDBG, if, uh, in case of both processor and HyperDBG, if uh, we're going to divide the interrupts and exceptions uh, into two parts. The IDT uh, co consists of 256 uh, interrupt vectors. So the first 32, uh, 32 uh, entries of IDT are used for processor exceptions and the remaining entries are used for uh, external uh, device interrupts. If we want to monitor uh, the first 32 entries of IDT, we, we could use a bang exception or exclamation mark exception event command. Uh, even though it's possible, but it's generally not a good idea to monitor all exceptions because it has a, a high rate of exceptions that coming into the system. So uh, it's not a good idea to intercept all of them, uh, but uh, you can uh, specify which excep uh, exception entry you want to monitor and uh, uh, monitor that by uh, using this uh, exception event command. Uh, here is an example of uh, intercepting a, a exception or 0xe exception uh, for page faults. Uh, don't worry about this stage post. Uh, we will get to it for now. Uh, we just add it to make sure that the CR2 is valid. I will uh, explain it. I will explain this stage post later in this series. But uh, no, let, let's just run this command uh, into the HyperDBG and see the page uh, faults coming into the system. I already connected uh, to this instance of HyperDBG. Uh, so I run this command. And as you can see uh, here, we have uh, <clears throat> uh, different, let, let's just run it again and pause it. And as you can see, uh, we can uh, see different processes uh, and, uh, that page fault happens into these processes. And the page fault or CR2 register is this, uh, this address. 
so uh probably some pages uh, some pages uh happen to not be present in the memory or uh, uh violation happens here or maybe paged out into the uh, and uh, it's no longer available in the uh, ramp so uh, this page faults happen and this way we can intercept uh 0xe or uh, page faults let's return back to a slides <laughs> if you want to uh monitor entries uh that are related to uh, ent uh, entries after 32 uh, after first 32 bit entries in the identity uh, in this range uh, from 33 to 256 we have to use the interrupt command in hyperdg so in case if we want to monitor a special uh, for example interrupt handler we could use this command and uh, it's generally advised again uh, and, and it's even not possible to uh, monitor all the interrupts because uh, the higher the rate of interrupts are really high but generally if we want to uh, see some of these interrupts uh, for example we, we can see the uh, interrupts for keyboard uh, for uh, other uh, devices other external io devices and even uh, if the if there is a clock interrupt in the operating system and we, and we want to monitor the clock interrupt we could also use this command for example i, I made a list of available uh, so some of the uh, interrupt uh, some of the interrupts that are used by windows for example th these are in decimal format so if i want to simply convert them to a hexadecimal format uh, this one is uh, for apc interrupts the dpc interrupt is located at 47 and this is uh, the interrupt that is used for clock interrupts so uh, if we want to see the clock interrupts, we should monitor this address D1 in hexadecimal format, and uh, also there are inter uh, processor interrupts, IPI, and PMI interrupts that are located at these specific addresses. So let's try to just um, monitor, for example, uh, interrupts uh, that are related to the clock interrupt. So I try to monitor D, Z, D1. Uh, uh, D1 is the uh, same as clock interrupt here. And in the S script, I try to write a printf function uh, that monitors the core. and uh, the target RIP instruction RIP or EIP instruction depends on the process uh, and also the process name or process PID Okay, let's uh, run this code to see what happens. Uh, uh, I'm not connected to the debugger. Again, I try to connect to my target VM machine. Um, the VM is not connected to the WinDG, that's why it's not responding.
Um, yeah. So just a little bit, see what happens in, in the target windows. As you can see, a different course receive interrupts uh this this is a little bit change in in the recent version of the windows in the uh past version of windows as long as i know they uh, broadcast the clock interrupts only on the zero uh core or only on the first core and then try to uh like uh make a coordination between the cores or uh, synchronizing the cores by using IPI interprocessor uh, interrupts. But uh, from what the results that uh, we see in the current version of the Windows, uh, uh, currently they uh, send clock interrupts to all of the cores. And we can, we can see it clearly here that all of the cores receive clock interrupts uh probably it's because of some optimizations because this is a highly uh, this is a critical part of the windows it has a high rate of execution so maybe this is for optimization uh reasons or maybe other reasons i don't know but from what we see all the cores receive the d1 or a clock interrupt so let's just try to clear all of them uh, uh normal continuity debug yeah. okay 